Hey guys, I want to talk today about the gap between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2 that explains God's twofold plan and purpose to restore all things in one in Christ and sheds much light on who Satan is and what his agenda is. But first, let me say, I don't buy the Big Bang Theory. Nothing didn't explode into rocks that got rained on into soup that somehow came alive. And I'm not an evolutionist. Once I was a tadpole, long and thin. Then I was a froggy with my tail tucked in. Next I was a monkey swinging from a tree. Now I'm a doctor with the PhD. Is ridiculously impossible. Okay? Didn't happen. So back to God's word. Scripture doesn't say how old the earth is. But many verses of the Bible do show it was originally created in eternity past. Since God didn't say specifically in Genesis 1-1 when he created the earth, we can't know how much time might have elapsed between 1-1 and 1-2. So to get started, let's read the passages in question. Genesis 1-1-2 In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God created the heaven and the earth. Singular. Period. And the earth was without form and void. Why? Because there was rebellion against God in heaven before the world began and on earth since it began. This is evident by God's twofold purpose to restore all things, both heavenly and earthly, back to his government. Colossians 1.16 says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And in Ephesians 1.10 we see that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. God's purpose to restore his kingdom on earth has to do with the nation of Israel and has been foretold by his prophets since the world began. Acts 3.21 says, Whom the heaven must receive until the restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of his, all his holy prophets since the world began. The mystery of the body of Christ being formed today has to do with the heavens and was a secret hidden in God until revealed by the glorified risen Christ to the Apostle Paul. 2 Timothy 1 9 says, Who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. The church being formed today during the dispensation of grace is God's response to the rebellion among the heavenly hosts in eternity past. It is his answer to the challenge of Lucifer at his fall before the world began. God kept it a secret until after Christ died, because if not, Satan wouldn't have let it happen, since Christ's death not only won the earth, but heaven for God. We know that angels already existed when God laid the foundations of the earth and set the boundaries of the seas, as we learn in Job 38, 1-11. For the sake of time, I'll let you read that on your own. We are given so much detail about the six days of creation, yet angels aren't mentioned at all. Why are they left out of the record if they were created during those six days? Because they were made before day one even began. They were created in Genesis 1-1, in eternity past, and that is why they rejoiced at the words, Let there be light. Adam was placed in the very area where God's city and throne once stood on the original earth. And that actually made Lucifer pretty mad. And he said about his diabolical plan to usurp the dominion that God gave to Adam. Speaking of the creation account, Notice that every verse in Genesis 1, after 1-1, one, one, begins with the word and, thus always moving the narrative forward, never referring to the previous verse. Verse 2 is not a description of verse 1, which ends with a period, but is the next step. Its descriptive language matches other verses that clearly speak of judgment as well. Jeremiah 4, 23 says, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void and the heavens, and they had no light. How did the earth become without form and void, as we just read? In Jeremiah 4.26, we see the answer. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down as the presence of the Lord, and by his fierce anger. 
We see Jeremiah is talking about a yet future judgment when we read the full passage. But by comparing scripture with scripture, as taught in 1 Corinthians 2.13, we can see that the earth becomes without form and void as the result of God's judgment. Further emphasizing this are the words deep and darkness, which are often associated with judgment in the Bible. God also just outright said that he didn't create the earth in vain. Isaiah 45.18 says, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. If it was created to be inhabited, it wouldn't have been created without form and void. God doesn't create in stages. He doesn't say he created the beasts and they were without form and void. To suggest that he spoke the earth that way insults and doubts what Deuteronomy 32, 4 tells us, that his work is perfect. Some say that by believing there's a gap, we are reading something into the passage that is not there. But there are other gaps in the Bible that folks don't seem to mind. Take this passage in Daniel 9, 26 to 27. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. There's a big old gaping gap there. Jesus died. He was cut off almost 2,000 years ago. Yet the prince that shall come, well, he won't show up until Daniel's 70th week. Just because God doesn't spell out plainly why there is a gap in Genesis 1 doesn't mean it didn't occur. We must always compare scripture with scripture in order to gain a full spiritual understanding of God's plan and purpose. That's why we are told to do so in verses such as 1 Corinthians 2.13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And 2 Peter 1.20 says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Gap opponents say that there was no sin or death before Adam sinned. But think about that story for a minute. Satan and Eve both sinned before Adam did. Some even say that it undermines the gospel. The claim is that if Lucifer fell before Genesis 2-3, then God could not have said that everything he made was good in 131. But that's not true. The first thing God says is good is light in verse 4. But Lucifer was made and fell between verses 1 and 2. God's statement in verse 31 is actually limited to what he had just made in the six previous days from 1, 3 to 30. He's talking about the actual physical earth. But Satan's habitation is not on this earth. It's in the heaven. As the following verses show, Behold, he putteth no trust in his saints. Yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight, we're told in Job 15, 15. And Ephesians 2, 2 says, Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And Revelation 12, 7 to 9 says, And there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great da- dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. God did not call the second heaven what we call space, good in Genesis 1.8. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. The original earth's destruction by water is referenced in this passage, 2 Peter 3, 4-6. And saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that the word, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, 
and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that was that then was being overflowed with water perished. Some say that's talking about the flood of Noah's day, but that doesn't make sense. The world didn't perish in Noah's flood. Granted, a lot of people and animals did. And for that matter, the earth was just covered in water. It didn't have to be completely reformed. It wasn't without form and void. In verse 6 of this passage, Peter is speaking of the beginning of creation, as the context shows by reading verse 4. The past judgment Peter is speaking of corresponds to the future judgment when God will once again destroy the heavens and earth so that he can make a new heaven and earth, as verses 8 to 13 show. You can read those for yourself, for space's sake. This is getting a little long. It bears noting that the heavens were not destroyed in Noah's flood either. When you take all of this together, I think it's pretty clear that Satan's deliberately trying to keep people from understanding that there is a gap between 1-1 one, one, and 1-2 one, because God, that's where Satan fell. He doesn't want you to know that. And I think it's very clear the Bible tells us the gap is there. If we just let the verses say what they say. But don't take my word for it. Study it out. Search the scriptures and see. That's what I do. And it never disappoints me. But instead, I grow in my walk with God daily as I read and hear what he is teaching me through his word. So is my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. May you rest secure, eternally gripped in his glorious grace.